Now, supposedly the comet bug is fixed. So surely we won't find out in like the middle of recording this league that it isn't when my computer crashes again. Right? Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben Yu here for another legacy video, and we finally get to play with Comet Stellar Pup. This is a very interesting planeswalker in that you are not going to know what it does when you activate its ability. You could end up making two squirrels, returning a card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand, uh, essentially lava axing your opponent, or adding loyalty to Comet and then rolling two more times. And you could get a six on one of those two and continue the chain. So this is an incredibly high variance and inconsistent card. However, the power level is certainly appropriate for Legacy. Now, how are you supposed to play this card? The answer is probably as a one or two of in some flex slots of like a control deck or a mid-range deck. But you know, it's my job on this channel to show off new cards and see how good they are. So we're going to play too many copies of this card. We're going to jam four copies of this card into an existing deck. And that's more than we should probably be playing of this card given its power level. But Let's just kind of see whether this card lives up to the hype that it has gotten from some paper results. Now, today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, Eminence Gaming, as well as Cool Stuff Inc. And remember, if you need paper magic cards like our good friend Comet here, check out Cool Stuff and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. So essentially what I've done here is I have taken a red white initiative deck list and i have swapped fourth air lingas for comet stellar pop is this a perfect in out substitution no absolutely not the cards do different things but it is an alternative sort of card that is not fully core to the deck list so it's probably okay to do so within the shell that i have on screen here we are happy rolling any number on the d6 except for three. Returning a card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to our hand is going to return things like Lotus Petal or Chrome Mox or maybe a land that got wastelanded. And that's not really the highest impact thing. We could play more Hate Bears, but as soon as we start playing things like Thalia, Comet becomes harder to cast. And we want to see how good Comet is when it gets into play today. Now, notably, Comet can pitch to both Fury and Solitude if you are kind of looking to experiment with this shell a little bit and make some changes. Um, sideboard is relatively stock here. I've geared a little bit towards some of the things that I'm expecting to see on Magic Online right now. I expect people to be playing around with Beseech the Mirror, so, like, I'm respecting Storm things and activations of things like Helm of Obedience quite a bit with the flex slots here. Uh, with that being said, like, let's go activate the Doggo. Hey, Phil from the future here. If you are here to watch Comet High Roll and see the craziest stuff that can happen, make sure you watch Round 4. Enjoy the show. And thank you very much to Peter, by the way, for donating to make this league happen. Okay. I think this hand is too fair to keep. Like, it's legitimately interesting. Turn 2 Chalice into turn 3 Archon is very good against a subset of this format, and I can have both a Seasoned Dungeoneer and an Archon of Ameria that are uncounterable. But this doesn't leverage the fact that I am on the play very well, so I think I am going to ship this one. Uh, this is a keep. Chrome Mox is the card that goes back. So it's it's mostly a question of like, how hard do I YOLO here? Because if I am willing to go all in on Comet, I can play turn one City of Traders, play Chalice on one, play Lotus Petal, and then turn two Comet. Comet can get back the, uh, the land some portion of the time. All right. I mean, this is what you came here to see, right? Like you, you came here to see the dog in action. 
who would I be to not attempt to do the dog? All right. That is a force of will. Um, Days and Wasteland will both be pretty good against us right now. Uh, statistically speaking, we're pretty likely to be playing against something Delver or... Wow, turn one sorcery speed brainstorm? Is that is that respect for Orcish Bowmasters or is that a misplay? Or are they a tr oh, oh, it's ninjas. I see. That was not a misplay. Days absolutely fucking savage. Oh. Um Huh. If I play Season Dungeoneer, that gets me a land making it more likely that I can get to Comet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm sad about it. Stupid good top decks. Second Force of Will. And one was pitched before, so that is their third Force of Will in this opener. Um, that is very brutal for me. Um, note that my opponent needs to draw one of either a land or a ninja in order to really... Okay, I guess that counts too. So this represents an immediate 4-4 by sacrificing the Ornithopter. With another land, I can get to Comet next turn. And Comet defends itself, kind of, sometimes, inconsistently. Well, I guess it defends itself greater than 50% of the time, right? Because on one or two, I make blockers. On four or five, I can kill the construct. On six, I get a reroll. So it's basically on not three. Yeah, that's that's fine. The four, four damage here is whatever. Um, Archon does not win this game in the same way that Comet probably does. I'm going to pass the turn here. A discard spell happening taking this comet would be pretty awkward. I'm at 12. Note that my opponent can start making 1-1s. One um, is this just going on human for these? Probably. There's only one force of will remaining in the deck. Go on human. And let us begin. All right. Activate this. All right, so I'm getting the Lava Axe mode. Damage equal to the number of loyalty counters on Comet, and then negative two. I'm going to kill the Construct token, and we'll pass the turn. My opponent can make a 1-1 one, one that can help to pressure Comet. This was expected. And then on my turn, I can play an Archon to kind of get in the way. Okay, so this is going at me, not at Comet, so my opponent wants to get a Ninja going. Okay, yep, there we go. So this will draw my opponent a card when their ninjas connect. We know that most of the Force of Wills are just, like, not an option anymore. Ooh, that is interesting. So let's roll. I roll a 1, I get 2 squirrels. Comet's loyalty is back up at 5 already. I'll drop an Archon of Ameria. It's in play. Um, let's attack with one squirrel. Let's leave a second one back. At this point, I would like to defend this comet quite a bit. And if my opponent has a removal spell for Archon, I'm fine throwing away a squirrel token to uh, keep comet's loyalty higher. Um, talking about a mistake that I made, uh, a couple turns ago, I should have put this cavern on elemental so that... In the unlikely scenario that I draw Solitude... Oh, come on! Come on! Anyway, in the unlikely scenario that I draw Solitude and then end up getting a Soul Land so that I can actually play Solitude, uh, like the exact scenario that we are seeing here. Um, and this is correct because three of the four Force of Wills are snuffed out, so the uncounterable part isn't what matters, the access to other creature types is what matters. And I think I'm going to chill. I, I think the defensive long game favors me, despite the fact that my opponent has Retrofitter Foundry. I think. All right, cool, we're chilling. Why have you forsaken me? Uh, we're chilling. And my opponent can start making 1-1s one in the end step. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Nice ETB tapped land. 
Archon has text that matters. All right. Um, that's not bad. So am I attacking with creatures yet? I don't know that I am. I think I'm just going to pass the turn. So there's a Thopter. I have cast my Lotus Petal this turn, so that's my one. I'll cast my Solitude on my opponent's turn. Preferably after they cast a spell of their own, so that it gets countered 0% of the time. Um, yes, that is fine. Although annoying. This is worth my two life here, I think. Let's go ahead and cast this. Take out the Infiltrator. And start working towards my own stuff here. Uh, Chromox, not what I'm looking for. My opponent has a 4 4 at the ready. Uh, so unfortunately, I think I'm just chilling. Uh, and it's very possible I just get buried by Retrofitter Foundries because I made the mistake with my Cavern of Souls. Sure. I get a 1 1 as well. Uh, yep. So that is great for ninja purposes. That is also very good with Retrofitter Foundry. Okay, so I can just double block and get rid of a construct here while gaining 3 life. I'm just going to start being attacked with two four fours next turn, so I think getting one out of the way is fine. I also know with 100% certainty that like nothing goes wrong in combat because my opponent only gets one spell a turn. So I gain 3 life from this attack. This is very much not what I'm looking to draw. I need a piece of gas. The Shouldered's Edict just absolutely won my opponent this game. I think I'm going to hold back both bodies. My life total is very precious right now. Alright. So they are going for a Thopter with one. Then turning the Thopter into a 4-4. Four four. So this means that they can crash in for four points of damage and then also do a Ninjutsu. Which is honestly real bad for me. I'm going to gain four life off this, I think. As... It's very possible that I could take 5 damage off a Yuriko trigger if my opponent just has the absolute bee's knees and hits the final copy of Force of Will off this trigger. And if I go to 1, I can't tap Ancient Tomb anymore. Okay. That is your 1 spell for this turn. Uh, that does not produce the white mana that I need to cast Solitude. I can block Yuriko. I think this one has slipped away. I think I'm comfortable conceding here. So my sideboard's not super well geared towards fighting this matchup. I'll probably play Swords to Plowshares and Lauren. I don't think I want to play Null Rod. Shutting off my own artifact mana matters quite a bit. Chalice when I'm on the play is totally reasonable. Chalice when I'm on the draw is not super good. But just kind of looking at the cards here, this is probably... My worst cards, my worst card in a lot of scenarios. I'm not sure if Comet is the cut after that. It might just be Archon. Like, my opponent does not need to cast that many spells. I'll just replace Archon with another 3 drop. Sometimes this hand is good. If my opponent plays a turn 1 Retrofitter Foundry or Ornithopter, like, this, this hand is legitimately strong. I think this is one of those times where I go, eh, good enough and keep the hand. Like, the top end of Dungeoneer into Dungeoneer into Comet, or some order thereof, is quite strong. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, yeah, this is, this is what I'm looking for. Just the ability to slow down deployment of a ninja. So our, our lore in hand lined up well against what my opponent was doing. I think I am even going to just still lore in this turn to stop that stuff from just immediately coming out. Goodbye, Ornithopter. And then I get to make the choice of Seasoned Dungeoneer versus Comet next turn. I feel like Seasoned Dungeoneer is just the better play in a vacuum. Uh, unfortunately, Artificer does not line up with Seasoned Dungeoneer's uh, accepted types. All right, we're chilling. Ooh, don't mind that. Let's bash on in. 
Uh, note that Orcish Bowmasters is a card that exists. And let's deploy Seasoned Dungeoneer. Yeah, it's good enough to get a response. Good enough for a fetch. That can't uh, get an Underground Sea. So they're committing to another Brainstorm, which will look at fresh cards since they got the fetch. Wow, I am legitimately surprised that that resolved. Uh, do I ever need Red Red? I literally never need Red Red. I'll grab a Plains. Already played my land drop. We'll call that good. Now what I don't really know is like, do I play Comet next turn? Or do I just jam another Seasoned Dungeoneer down my opponent's throat? Uh, sure. Also sure. Yeah, if my opponent turns that into a 4-4, four, four, I can just nuke it with uh, Touch the Spirit Realm, Blink. And I don't think I want us to both draw a card off of Lauren. Uh, we will forge. We'll just forge up Seasoned Dungeoneer here. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, we've got gas, folks. So I will make this land drop. I guess I attack with Lauren to bait this activation. Yeah. Okay, so that automatically targets correctly. Source the plowshares. I will not put that card into my graveyard. I'm certainly happy drawing that. Uh-huh. So, we will... Just go ahead and poof that token out of the way. Now my opponent can't get the initiative on their turn. And they are facing down lethal damage next turn. Alright, they go to 8. I will drop a Seasoned Dungeoneer. We're just going to play the things that 100% get to attack in. I will trap my opponent and put them to 3. Alright. I do not actually return your creature. Yep, okay. Um, yeah, just like Dungeoneer, Dungeoneer, Comet, Caves of Cast Adventure was an insane top end. Um, about the only thing I can do here is think about playing a couple of Null Rods to become better versus Retrofitter Foundry. Again, my artifact matter, mana matters a lot when I have so many 4-drops, though, that I don't think I am going to do that. This is the YOLO Comet hand, right? So Chrome Mox, Imprint Spirit Guide, City of Traders, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal to play around days, Comet. Um, let's see how good it is. Um, so we're... Are we, are we seeing black or blue here? We're seeing blue, so that means cantrip. And if my opponent has an Ornithopter, we can still be looking at a turn 2 ninja, but I probably get some breathing room here. I also have not confirmed whether or not my opponent's build is on days yet, right? I haven't seen one in two relatively long games. Some of the ninjas lists have them and some don't. All right. Bam. Bam. White, white to cast this solitude later uh, could in theory be a little bit difficult. Play both lotus petals. And uh, please don't force a will me. But I said please. Um, so the hand's awkward from here. We're in fine territory if we top deck, like, a reasonable 4-drop, but I currently have red-white as far as my colored mana sources go, which is not what I'm looking to do. Sure. Uh, boy, that's awkward. Like, I can play Solitude as a 3-2 lifelinker that's just in play. That doesn't really feel correct to me. Like, that play will be invalidated by a 4-4 that can sit back and block or another creature pretty quickly. So I, I don't think I'm going that route for this game. I would ultimately like Cavern to go on human and make my various initiative creatures uncounterable. End of turn brainstorm. Alright, so it looks like we're just chilling. My opponent's going to make a 1-1 creature. Eh, not the happiest that I'm in this situation, but here we are. And again, because there's some flexibility in what I might want Cavern of Souls on, I don't think I play it out to just kind of naturally be on five mana next turn. All right. Eh. Something, something, something. Basic lands are good. Something, something, something. Um, We are... 
The attack doesn't actually accomplish anything because my opponent just blocks and then sacrifices, turns that into a Thopter. Um, I could then use the Cavern to play Solitude and remove that creature if my opponent does it that way. Okay, the attack does something. I'm just not happy about what it does. And the attack's awkward in some cases where my opponent just stares at me like they just did. A little... Oh, wow. Opting to go wide rather than work their way up the chain. I will not point a source of plowshares at a servo token. I will point a source of plowshares at like a Yuriko that gets ninjutsu in, though. Happy enough taking this damage. All right. There is the Yuriko. Do I let my opponent draw one card so that I can attempt to solitude first? No. Because top decking something like a Caves of Chaos Adventurer is very, very, very good here. My opponent's waiting to pay costs. That is a Force of Will pitching a Daze. All right, Daze confirmed. So my opponent gets to start drawing extra cards. And assuming Spirit Guide now needs to stay back on defensive duty. Uh, that is a Lauren. That will be worth giving up a City of Traders for. So we will put this on Human and play an uncounterable Lauren. We can take out the Retrofitter Foundry, although my opponent will still end up with a Thopter. I also may end up in a situation where I end up wanting to have both of us draw cards because it's so important for me to find another piece of gas. All right, so there's the Thopter. Take out the Foundry. Um, no attacks, because I want to block Yuriko. There's no evasion here. We get a little bit of selection to try to wiggle through the spot that they're in. Um, I think my opponent is very favored. Like, my mana is awkward as of right now, and a lot of my top decks like Comet don't actually work out super well. Okay. I will sacrifice the Lauren, I guess. I mean, Spirit Guide is the better blocker here. Um, this does mean that my opponent is not ninjutsuing a true source of card advantage in this turn unless they play Moon Circuit Hacker, uh, which is pretty rare since it's an X1 creature. Uh, that is not currently castable. Uh, do I play City of Traders? I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't think I do. All right, so that card is going to surprisingly be a bit of a problem because that just represents a card draw off Yuriko every turn, and probably more than that slightly later. Uh, there's not another ninja as of right now. So that's nice. Okay, so I think I am scared enough that I just cast a Dazable Touch the Spirit Realm. I, I think I just can't let my opponent spiral the game out of control with this combo. We'll take out Yuriko. The Spirit Guide held back now doesn't do anything for blocking purposes against this or this, so we're battling. I know, at least as of right now, my opponent does not have another ninja. I can also read that they do not have days and also do not have Force of Negation. So they're potentially just, like, having lands in hand or maybe a removal spell that they're not super comfortable using. Okay, we are getting a ninja. There's a new Yuriko. Okay, yeah, that's another thing. Like, it, it's legendary. Makes sense that that's something else that could be in hand. See how bad this trigger is? Polluted Delta. Sure. I need... I need a reasonable draw. I need to, like, draw a 4-drop or something that is going to have an impact on this game. Simeon Spirit Guide. That's, um... That's not quite it. I'm currently deciding whether or not I am the beatdown, and whether or not I want to play City of Traders to play around days. This might be a turn where I'm starting to fall enough behind that I need to play this so that if I draw a natural white land, I can just play it and cast Solitude. All right. Cast Spirit Guide. We're in play. Life totals are close enough that I think I am going to continue to attack. My opponent can pump the brakes at any time by holding back the 1-3 Yuriko. 
A timeout win is also possible. My opponent's down on clock quite a bit, but that's not something that I'm actively playing towards. Ooh. I don't know that I beat that. I'd probably take three damage this turn most of the time, or maybe an average of three. Ingenious Infiltrator. Uh, that's pretty bad for me. So my attacks aren't good anymore. He's in Dungeoneer. Well, this gets me to cast Solitude next turn, but I'm not entirely sure that it's actually good. My opponent gets to contest the initiative just so easily here. And my attacks this turn aren't good. I can force... No, I can't force two damage even. All right. All right. My opponent has made a 4-4. Four, four. And then they're going to make a second 4-4. Four, four. Well, they have the option to make a second 4-4. Four, four. Okay, they did not take it. Which I believe is correct, because that means that Changeling Outcast can attack and then... Uh, construct token can block afterwards. Ooh, we are on full defense duty. Sure. All right. Let's see how bad this Yuriko trigger is. What are you doing? Are you brainstorming in response? Oh, I see. Just still in combat damage. You're going to ninjutsu. That's fine. Okay. So now you replay the unblockable creature. And I see if I can get this game over with. Drawing an initiative creature would have been clutch there. Then attack for four. Taking the initiative plus trap would have done my opponent in. So, we always start here. Uh, put Touch the Spirit Realm into my graveyard. No, that's an above average draw. Opponent goes to five. I take the initiative. I forge Season Dungeoneer. To make sure that that card is lethal 100% of the time next turn. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And already play around a daze. And I need to just not die. I think I cast the Solitude on my opponent's turn to give them less information about what to do with Retrofitter Foundry. And that lifelink damage is coming. Alright. Oh, that's it. I guess if my opponent spikes Force of Will, this is still lethal, so I should try to remove here. But let's attempt a Solitude. That is a Force of Will. Pitching Days, which I played around. So my opponent does get to take the initiative. So the thing that I don't want is I don't want them to remove Season Dungeoneer on their own turn. If I get to draw, I can attack in, attempt to kill my opponent with Season Dungeoneer, and then if they go for it, I just blink Season Dungeoneer, and that's the game. Oh no. Uh, so if my opponent has another Force of Will, I'm dead. I can see one, two, three copies of Force of Will. Uh, Force of Will or in oh, no, Ingenious Infiltrator does not do it. They revealed an island. I feel like you fetch in that spot, right? Like, you fetch in that spot to get another look at Force of Will being the top card to kill me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we should be good at this point. Are we going to sit here for... No. Nope. Okay, okay. All right. Um, that was a slog. Uh, GG's. Eminence Gaming's Command Tower software is a fantastic way to run four-player EDH or CEDH events, and it's also great for 1v1 tournaments. It has easy event registration, and there's no download required. Everything just runs in browser. The best part is that it's only five bucks. Visit eminence.events for details. All right. Um, no colored mana. Easy mulligan. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is turn one, Chalice of the Void. Any red card gives me Fable of the Mirror Breaker. But I'm base white, not base red. I think this one goes back to, unfortunately. Uh, we are going to five. We are going to four. This is not good. One, two, three, four. This is a real plan. That is probably the best that I can do on these resources. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose to anything. Absolutely anything. I'm going to lose to a Wasteland. I'm going to lose to a Discard spell. 
to lose to a single counter spell. Like, li li life's fucking bad on four cards. All right, so counter spells are live. Sure. Okay. I can at least make it so I don't immediately lose to days. I am down for that. And I think this is the card to jam here. Like, if this card gets Force of Willed, I'm good with that. And we'll just kind of see where this hand goes. Like, bad things like Teferi can just pretty much happen immediately. Fuck. Yep. Alright. The follow-up counterspell would be pretty rough. Ooh. Um, no, we'll keep both those. Attempt Season Dungeoneer. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I needed that win. We'll grab a Plains. We will not immediately play it. So, the Disaster Line is Swords to Plowshares into Attack, Hold the Initiative, and then Counterspell for this Season Dungeoneer. Okay, um, yep. It is my full... Blah, 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 yeah, words. Again, we're okay unless the follow-up counter spell happens. That's, that's the point where I just don't think I win. Okay, so that was no shuffle there. Swords of Plowshares represented. Okay. I believe I play Season Dungeoneer. It is a legitimate debate, though. Because, like, these two cards operate differently. Okay, that, that's the disaster scenario that I outlined. My opponent now has the initiative, and I have lost my ability to play another 4-drop. Uh, we are probably dead in short order, but we had more of a game than I expected considering the mold of 4. Like, we, we mold to a perfectly viable hand. My stuff just got stopped. I can still rip Ancient Tomb or City of Traders off the top and be competitive. Otherwise, I think I'm just not losing Reflection too. My opponent's playing an Uro. Tapping the Delighted Halfling to do so, notably. So do you have a Flash creature? Or another piece of removal? Or, or what? Old Breacher? I'm not winning by doing nothing. I will go ahead and send on in. And you can show me your removal spell. Yep. Okay. It is just uh, air quotes, sorcery speed, prismatic ending. You're maybe supposed to do that on your own turn, though. Because things like Touch the Spirit Realm exist that greatly punish my opponent for waiting. I'm not that far behind on cards, but I am very far behind because of this. I think with that in play uh, and being like a bounce spell queued up, a 3-4 in play, I think I am comfortable calling it here. So Comet is definitely the sort of thing that I want for this matchup. Just the ability to grind through bullshit. Um, chalices are probably going to come out for Swords to Plowshares because answering Uro is so important. I think that's the only change I'm making. I don't think I want to go down this route to fight Uro, because like that that is a dead draw versus the control portion of my opponent's deck. This hand will produce a turn to uncounterable Season Dungeoneer, and then has two Oblivion Rings, or two pseudo-protection spells. This is unexciting, but fine. I would prefer a hand that has two pieces of gas, but as we saw, my my mulligans won't always be perfect. All right, cool. Note, I'm very happy to not see Delighted Halfling here. Eh. All right. Two men. And we are going to go ahead and just jam. If I wait another turn, I can do this while holding up Touch the Spirit Realm. But I don't necessarily think... Grab Mountain, I guess. I don't necessarily think that I can take that turn off here. Because just ticking up the initiative and going to Lost Well is worth a lot. In terms of like making Touch the Spirit Realm better later on. And I think I will actually go down the right side here. I don't expect this game to just end immediately. Bottom, bottom. Snap, bottom, bottom. 
Cool. Uh, we'll play a Caracas. Play a Lotus Petal. Then we'll start sending in. I will put Lotus Petal into my graveyard. Absolutely. Opponent's at 16. I'll call it a turn. No creature from my opponent. No play here. Do I blink this to immediately start working towards Catacombs? I don't think so. I think I just hold two of these. Create another Lotus Petal. A different name. There's a Swords. I'm actually super happy to draw. And on in there. Human Spirit Guide. Yes, that can go into my graveyard. Not looking to draw that. On side 11. Everything's working. Okay. Why did you keep your hand? Are you just on 99 counter spells over there? Okay, there's another color. One ring. This is fine. I will go to Catacombs. Create my 4 1. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm happy to see that. Note that I won't do damage here, but I still get this trigger. Get a land. And I am potentially representing lethal damage. Good stuff. Yep. You may take your cards. Lose a life in upkeep. Sure. Note that I think holding up Touch the Spirit Realms as protection for Seasoned Dungeoneer is so much more important than removing the One Ring, which is why I did not remove it. I also think it is incredibly likely, incredibly likely, that my opponent has multiple counter spells in hand. Sure, sure, sure. All right, we're just doing it again, which is annoying, but is a thing that exists. So I will now get to Throne of the Dead 3. Guess we'll Archon. More Cavern of Souls. Bash on in. Uh, yes, Chrome Mox will go to my graveyard. Oh, it takes no damage. I need to play one of these. I will put this one on Ape. And call it a turn. Yep. Oh, my opponent goes down to 7. Frame Verdict is annoying, but certainly beatable. All right. So this is what we've been waiting for. We'll touch the Spirit Realm, targeting Seasoned Dungeoneer. Like so. My opponent gets one spell. They don't get to disrupt this. You can have your second land drop. And at end step, this is going to come back. And I'll do the whole venture thing. Grab a Plains. Comes to my upkeep, I will forge up this creature. We're very interested in the left side now. Oh no, not swords to plowshares. Oh no. Whatever will we do? Like I've been planning around this for the last few turns. Um, not super excited about Ancient Tomb here. Um, I will drop a land and cast an uncounterable... Simeon Spirit Guide, which does not happen often. Now, this is where the fun begins, you see. As Touch the Spirit Realm brings back my creature. Ooh, getting saucy. I will trap my opponent, who just conveniently fetched to six life. They are now at one life. <laughs> And they just realized their mistake. Um, they, if they didn't fetch, they could have stayed alive for one more turn, but they would have to like get rid of the one ring. Um, very happy with how I piloted that game. Um, I'm going to assume that my opponent's hand had multiple counter spells that my original uh, Cavern of Souls just blanked. Uh, but their hand did not do a lot. This hand can produce a turn one Archon of Ameria. I do not believe that that is enough to win a game on its own. Like this is five mana sources and an Oblivion Ring. I think I can do better. Not like that. <sighs> Just strictly worse than the first hand that I thought couldn't win the game. I don't, I don't think this is it. I'm, I'm going to go harder here. Cavern on Archon, this is an incredibly good four-card hand. 
I think this is better than the previous Archon Hand. Um, not by a lot, though, because the mana is very awkward. Uh, if my opponent has kept a removal heavy hand, I'm dead. If my opponent kept a counterspell heavy hand like last time, I'm totally fine. There's a halfling, uh, which means Teferi can happen next turn, which would be annoying. I am set up to lose a very large amount of life off of this ancient tomb. F. That's fine. The ancient tomb is more replaceable than the Cavern of Souls. Like, the fact that these creatures, in theory, will be uncounterable is what potentially makes this hand good. Alright. Mountain Pass. Alright, we're not seeing Teferi this turn, which is cool. I don't really want to see queued up bounce spells in play. So my opponent has access to the fetch, but is not pulling the trigger immediately on it. Okay. That's actually a pretty good draw. That sets me up well for the future. So this goes on Archon. And I'll go ahead and drop this. We've gotten the fetch. And my opponent can immediately Swords the Plowshare, is it, if they have it? Nice, they don't. That's very important for me. And I'm sure that's quite clear. Okay, sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. We're going somewhere with this game now. I'm very happy with this. And Supreme Verdict is less likely since my opponent played out another Delighted Halfling. One goes on Human for later, for the initiative creatures. Second Archon. Your lands come into play double tapped. That is a joke. That's not a thing, just in case you're new to magic. Feels like it's either Teferi or Ring time. It is Teferi time. And we're just going to tempo an Archon out of play. I love, love seeing fetch lands come into play tapped. That brings joy to my cold, dead heart. Let's attempt to kill Teferi. Okay, success. And we'll drop an uncounterable Archon. I don't think I go for Source of Plowshares on a Delighted Halfling. I think I need to save this for an Uro or something. Or save it for a more opportune moment. That is the One Ring. Which, obviously, I don't want to see. Still don't think I removed Delighted Halflings. And my opponent probably doesn't have all that many ways to physically win the game. And I would prefer to use my Limited Removal on the things that are actually going to help them win. We, uh, we only have to wait them out a few more turns with the one ring, right? Right? That is Supreme Verdict. Yep. Board's clear. Uh, which is obviously something that I don't want to see. And uh, we're just going to be passing the turn for a little while. My opponent has the one ring, um, which will win them the game before... They will just bleed out to it. Because they can just like Teferi bounce it or play a new one to reset it. So like, let's not celebrate here. I'm not going to give my opponent another card off of replaying that. I'm just going to take it out now. There's a fair chance that my opponent has a counterspell, just by the way. Yeah, I suspect it as much. Uh, but we've we've been playing this Cavern of Souls game with the hope of blanking counterspells, so that Source the Plowshares is one of the very first things I have given them that they could realistically cast that matters. So from here, assuming I don't draw a removal spell, Uro's life gain offsets the one ring. Um, so life's bad. Like, it's bad enough that I will probably give myself two draws and then concede if I don't rip an answer. This is like, this is three life loss. My opponent gains three on the attack. They can still draw three cards if they want and uh, look like they want. I think my next draw is my last opportunity to answer Uro before it's just too late. Yeah. Oh, there's more. <laughs> oh, good God. Am I just dead? Take 11 this turn? Yeah, I, I am comfortable conceding to that. Great match. Well, I mean, kind of great match. Like, the gameplay was good, but I, I got bodied by mulligans that time. And I am, I am struggling with mana consistency here. 
Um, I think I just keep this hand in turn one Fable and just kind of hope that things work out. I alternatively could turn one Chalice of the Void, turn two Fable. But I think I need to loot to make this hand reasonable. I will get punished by my opponent playing a combo deck that resolves around a one drop. Because that's how life goes. Okay, probably playing against Delver. Could be a sneak and show deck still. Either way, I am probably using my mana on my turn to Chalice of the Void. The question after that is like, what do I do in regards to my looting? Okay. I don't know whether my opponent is on Delver or not yet. And that changes the value of Solitude a lot. I'm going to use this ability. I'm going to assume that mana is replaceable. And I'm going to assume that a white card for Solitude is replaceable. Cast a Lotus Petal. And go ahead and crash in for some damage. This gives me four mana. I am just still going to use my mana to cast Chalice of the Void, though. I don't know what deck my opponent is playing. If they are playing Delver, this is a great play. If they are playing Show and Tell, this is a fine play. Force Pitching Fire Ice. That's been seeing more... Those sorts of cards that can split damage have been seeing more and more play as more Orcish Bowmasters hits the format, and it's just important to clean up the Orc token. All right. Fable of the Mirror Breaker turns into Reflection of Kiki Jiki. And I get to crash in, make some more mana that'll allow us to play around days. One's at 15. Don't believe I play this land. We will use the Lotus Petal over one of the treasure tokens here, as the Lotus Petal is something that can come back with a Comet later. Press down, maybe? Counterspell, sure. I'll try again next turn. We've got third land drop. Something like a Teferi could happen. Um, by the way, the counterspell is usually an indicator that my opponent is going to be on a slightly bigger deck, so we should be expecting like Jeskai control with maybe like fourth Aeor Lingas as the primary win condition. There's a Teferi. We'll see which one of these my opponent goes after. They're going for the Reflection, which is perfectly reasonable to do. Um, I will be taking out this Teferi this turn. You just don't leave Planeswalkers around when you have the opportunity to say no to them. The fairy's dead. Opponent's at 13. Since I have an Ancient Tomb and I'm at a high life total, this might be a turn where I, I save a treasure token by making a land drop. Let's do this. I am going to attempt to take the initiative. If succeeded. I have a planes out of the deck. I've already made a land drop. We'll call it a turn. Some portion of the time introducing the initiative into the game versus this deck can be a little bit awkward because like they do have haste creatures. Like they're situational haste creatures. But like you do have to respect two twos coming in and taking the initiative and introducing Monarch into the game. Oh wow. Um we're just getting to move to the next turn here. That's fantastic. Oh? Sure. So no spells for me this turn. And creatures can't attack. Understood. Am I scrying? I, I don't think so. I'm going to diversify my threats here. Oh. Oh, that's very nice. I really wanted this extra mana, but... Can't always have it. All right. We are now insulated versus a spot removal spell on Season Dungeoneer. And we're insulated versus Supreme Verdict. I see. So my opponent is playing Scepter Chant. Okay. I mean, you're not going to like what I'm about to do to you. <laughs> um, so when do I want to do this? Probably at their end step. I just blink that out. So let's get rid of that. Temporarily. 
And they would need a third copy of Orem's Chant to do something kind of gross to me. So let's trap my opponent for a large amount of damage. You're just going to ice down a permanent? Yep, you're going to ice down a permanent. It's okay. We've already hedged against this by putting counters here instead. Uh, Chalice of the Void is an amazing draw. I'm very happy with that draw. It will send in. Get my treasure. Get my opponent for four. It's worth the life here. Two mana for a Chalice of the Void. Shut off a future Orem's Chant. And then we will get this enchantment going. We're fine if the token eats it to a Supreme Verdict. Alright, you may return your thingy to play. Would you like to imprint a thing? <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to imprint a Spell Pierce there. Like, that, that is a card that could be pitched to a Force of Will or whatever later. Uh, feels like we're done. I'll draw a card. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunately not how that works. Yeah. Yeah. So just explaining this interaction, Kicker is paid as an additional cost. It does not change the mana value or converted mana cost of the spell. So if my opponent... If my opponent's primary win condition is just tapping down my stuff, like, these anti-artifact cards are probably perfectly reasonable against my opponent. Comet's um, great. Is Solitude my weak link? Solitude might be my weak link. Haven't seen a creature that I need to remove yet. I am not interested in this hand. It does not have enough mana. <laughs> uh, Nullrod Chrome Box combo? Um, the hand's a keep. I am not ready for Touch the Spirit Realm as of right now. I believe that is the card that is going back. I could throw back the Null Rod, but I, I think I want it. I do kind of have to decide how I'm going to play turn one. If I just Fable on turn one, I don't necessarily 100% of the time cast Caves of Chaos Adventure on turn two, but I think I'm still supposed to fable, uh, especially now that I drew that second dead Chrome Mox. The singular treasure token that I get off of the attack matters a lot. Oof. It's fine. Any, any land, any colored card is fine. We'll see what my opponent does here. We've got, a, got ourselves a right old combo going on. All right, attempt Caves of Chaos Adventurer, which I'm guessing is going to get counterspelled. I am correct. So now we're living off the top of the deck without white mana. And a little bit of an awkward position regarding playing the Null Rod to preemptively stop losing to my opponent's stuff. Okay, um, we'll hold. Fourth land, but no other play. I'm not going to wait for a Cavern of Souls. Costs me two life. It fishes the white mana out of my deck if it resolves. Signs point to no. Oh, we're going deeper. Mystic Sanctuary. Oh, I see. You're going to put a Counterspell on top and then Brainstorm into the Counterspell. Sure. That's fine. It's a weird build-your-own kind of force of will. Like, it, it, it's not negative card advantage in the way that Force of Will is, though. All right. Force of Will is now hard castable. Cavern is a great draw. I can consider playing Null Rod here. I don't think I'm going to do that yet. I, I, I haven't seen an Orem's Chant yet. It's still probably in against me. Uh, that is a choice of a card to play. Very, very good EDH card. We rotting now. We're probably null rotting now. It shuts off some, like, Chrome Mox lines to help get a Comet into play specifically. But just not having to deal with... <laughs> uh, we'll hold that one for Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, I don't know how many actual win conditions my opponent is playing. The answer is almost certainly not enough. 
Yeah, they're just they're just making line drops. Okay, there we go. So human does cost me a little life. Rust down is annoying. I do want to just ride the initiative to victory. But at the end of the day, like, never mind. They've just got the removal spell too. Sure. I also did sort of want the land off the initiative. Like, that was definitely something that was going to matter. Uh, yeah, we'll just play this and pass. And I turn Brainstorm. I don't know that I'm the biggest fan of this play. Unless you've got something like an Entreat the Angels in hand that you're setting up. But like, you're, you're under no pressure. Okay, yeah, that was... I don't know how beneficial that Brainstorm was. Yeah, no Shuffle off the Ponder. Alright, sure. Would you like to bounce my Null Rod? No. Just plussing. Season Dungeoneer. Great. I'm actually going to cast a second Null Rod here to see if my opponent reacts to it. Negative. Uh, please don't dress down me again. Annoying. Um, so the reason that I'm playing a second dress down is that I don't want my opponent to get to this situation where they can just bounce a Null Rod out of play and then Orums chant me out of the game forever. That's, that's just not a situation that I want to be in. All right, sure. Okay, yep, they bounce a Null Rod. All right, cool. They tap down one of my lands, that's fine. That is a human. So I guess I recast the Null Rod first. See if my opponent wants to bite on it. Negative. And I am just going to play this out. I think immediately playing the creatures when I draw them matters in this matchup. Uh, I will not blow up anything. And it's possible that this just eats half of a fire or whatever, but I'm very happy if this eats a more real spell like Swords to Plowshares. Um, I, I think this is about the turn count where I talk about this. My opponent is not trying to win the game. Like, their deck is not built to win games of Legacy. It's turn 13. My opponent has, ha like, had control, air quotes, control on this game for quite some time. Like, put more win conditions in your deck, please. I'll go to 12 from this. My opponent becomes the Monarch. I'm going to get to draw a card. Sure. That is unfortunate. I think at this point I'm, I'm dead to this. Okay. No second copy of Mystic Sanctuary. That's important to know. Because if they have a second copy, they can just play fourth Aerolingas and kill me. All right. They get to draw a card. That is too late. I am dead here. So I have now shown my opponent that I have Null Rod to respect their combo. I maybe don't need it anymore. Like if I were the opponent and I had like Isochron Scepter in my deck, I would probably board it out here after seeing that. So I think I'm actually going to board out the Null Rods. I think they've done their job and I'm going to board in two copies of Solitude, which is a flash creature I can play on their turn, uh, assuming Teferi isn't in play. Okay. Uh, the Hands of Keep, I have to figure out how I'm playing it. It's probably turn one Archon. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of an awkward turn one Archon, right? Because it's like Ancient Tomb, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Spirit Guide, play Lotus Petal, use Lotus Petal and Ancient Tomb to cast Archon so that I can keep both. What the fuck is my opponent doing? Okay. Yeah, my opponent has kept a two-card hand. So, Chrome Mox. Actually, maybe I now keep Send me the Spirit Guide to always guarantee... Actually, maybe I just imprint Archon now and play a turn one initiative creature. Like, my opponent's not playing that many spells anyway. I buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I am going to start with Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Oop. All right, so let's play this. Yes, you may force of will my first play. I accept. They missed their land drop. Uh, I'm just going to get the initiative going. 
Like the initiative just happens 100. Yeah, yeah. GG's. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and I personally keep all of my deck lists for every format on this site. I love that I can go and sort them by types and tags if I need to. There's a lot of different viewing options. It can give you some math about your mana symbol, your curve, and you can even play test and do sample opening hands with it. Check this site out if you haven't before. It's awesome. All right, I have kept my hand. It's sort of interesting. If I would like, I can YOLO a turn one comet by doing something like Planes, Chrome Mox, Imprint, Fable, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Comet. But it's probably just better to play Fable. So how am I playing Fable? I think off double Lotus Petal and I loot away Chrome Mox. I need the Comet if Fable gets Force of Willed. If Fable resolves and everything's... Oh. My opponent doesn't have a Counterspell. I mean, I YOLO Comet. Now that I know that what I do resolves. Let's say yes. Do this. Do this. I've never... Well, okay. I yolo Comet once. Haha, <laughs> got the squirrels. Nice. Uh, but it was in a match that crashed. I yolo Comet, rolled a 6, and the game crashed. That bug has been fixed at this stage. Alright, we are playing against 8 cast. Alright, my opponent Chalice is on 0. Uh, which is a thing that is very good against them. So yeah. Um, also, I just have like Caracas to bounce his Emery, which is super savage. All right, Comet. Ooh. So I got the uh, damage mode. That'll go face. Opponent goes to 11. I will bounce Emery. Attack for two. It is... Fucking turn two, and my opponent is at nine life. Um, so yeah. This is the best Comet has looked in this video so far. Patchwork Automaton. Sure. That may trade with a Squirrel. Okay. Um, Comet. <laughs> uh, nice. Do I just go Dome? Just Lava Axe my opponent to the Dome? Or do I kill Patchwork Automaton? I think I just send face. Opponent's at four. Uh, I will send both of these at my opponent here. Oh, wow. Opponent goes for the block. They're at three. I am going to Chalice on one, specifically because of some things like Spell Bombs or Shadow Spear that my opponent could cast. Yeah, and my opponent... Ooh... All right, they are fine with it. So if Comet rolls a five or a six next turn, my opponent is dead. That's a thing. All right. Zero Comet. I have rolled a six. I now get to activate this two more times. So Comet. I have rolled a six. I get to activate this two more times. I activate Comet. I will return a Lotus Petal to my hand. I will activate Comet. I will return a Lotus Petal to my hand. I will activate Comet. Uh, I hit another three. I do not get to return a Lotus Petal here. Oh, right. Could have returned that. So I need to use Solitude to protect Comet. Or at least to attempt to protect Comet. I know my opponent has Force of Will. I'm going to hold back the Squirrel and attempt to use Solitude to stop an Urza Saga token from getting equipped with Shadow Spear. Yep. I am going to do this now. In case the Force of Will previously was a bluff, I don't think that it was. All right, pitching the Emery that I knew about. Um, this game probably falls apart now, because my opponent just gets to go, like, Shadow Spear, equip, kill Comet, gain life, and be out of range of just getting killed by the Squirrel. Comet hitting three, like, three times in that turn was unlucky, but I guess hitting six multiple times was lucky, so. Oh, I don't know about that play. 
The ancient tomb's not live to equip Shadow Spear. Oh, okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's just not the direction I thought we were going with it. Yeah, I guess I get attacked. Um, gaining five life is fine. Uh, Cavern's a dead draw. Yeah, I, I think I'm dead. Again, a, a Shadow Spear just gets into play. My opponent gains six-ish life. Okay, nope. Do, do you not have Shadow Spear game one? You might not have Shadow Spear game one. Yeah, definitely no Shadow Spear in game one. I think I just eat 14 here, am facing down 21 or so points of damage. I can't top deck a new Comet to Lava Axe my opponent out of the game. My initiative creatures are too slow. Lightning Bolt's countered by Chalice of the Void. And I have flooded here. Um, GG's. Comet giveth, Comet taketh away. I, I thought there was like 0% chance of us like losing the game once I hit multiple 6s on Comet, but each one of those 6s was then balanced out by multiple 3s. Ugh. Lauren in, Nullrod in, Swords to Plowshares probably in. Chalice goes on zero rather than one, so it's okay. These cards don't conflict. I could board down a little bit of artifact mana because I am boarding in Nullrod. I don't think I'm going to do that. I am going to board Comet out here. We're going to bench the pup. I'm actually having trouble with cuts from here. Touch the Spirit Realm is relevant removal. It's very slow. The blinking also doesn't matter a lot here. Maybe that can go. I also don't have to board in all four copies of Swords to Plowshares. Or alternatively, I could go down a couple of Solitude. Go down a couple of Solitude. I have a decent amount of red cards left in the deck. The pitching isn't always going to be reliable. All right, what are we doing? Turn one. Chroma Imprint Spirit Guide. Play a land. Or alternatively, Chrome Mox Imprint Fable, play Planes, turn two, Season Dungeoneer. Oh, but this is a six card hand. F. I could turn one Fable, do this, 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 put this on human, pitch Planes, turn one Fable to correct future draws and get rid of this. That's fine. Wait, am I a crazy person? I thought I was looking at a mulligan of six. Uh, this is a seven card hand. Okay, so let's <laughs> reevaluate. I think I'm going back to that turn two season Dungeoneer line. Imprint. Fable. Play. Lanes. Chalice on zero. Pass. And we just see how much damage this has done to my opponent. An Urza Saga or like Urza Saga and Ancient Tomb Hand can still keep up with what I just did. Otherwise, this is incredibly strong. Ooh, nice. So we will go human. And I'm going to drop the Caves of Chaos Adventurer first, as that one has the ability to scale up over time, so it's better the longer it's in play. Caves of Chaos Adventurer attacks for more initial damage and looks at another card. I'm supposed to get basic planes there for the two copies of Solitude that remain in my deck. Alright, there's a Saga. There's a two mana Emery. Life from the Loam? Wild. Alright, four drop season Dungeoneer. Ooh, nice. So we'll just send in. Uh, yes, I will put Lotus Petal into my graveyard. We're not interested in that at this point. All right, opponent goes to 14. We are going to play another Season Dungeoneer this turn. Blockers just do not get involved in the equation against this card. All right, yeah, and my opponent is Dunzo. My opener was very good on the draw. I can play the other copy of Solitude if I want. My Archons get noticeably worse on the draw. Um, I think I think I'm just happy with this configuration though. The hand is a keep, and we'll figure out how I'm going to play it. it. A lot of it depends on whether or not 
I am going to have to use Swords to Plowshares as a spell to stop something like an Emery that my opponent puts into play on turn one. There's a turn one thought cast. No immediate creature. I can Chrome Mox, Imprint Fable, play Ancient Tomb, play Lotus Petal, and play an initiative creature this turn, and then play a second one next turn. This will kind of leave the Source of Plowshares in my hand dead sometimes. But I think I am in the mood to jam, and my opponent has let me know that they don't have a counterspell. So let's do this. Let's do this. And let's drop the one that scales up again, like so. Grab a planes out of the deck. And uh, yeah, next turn we have Uncounterable Caves of Chaos Adventurer, followed by Sword Supply Shares on an opposing creature the next turn. Um, I guess like Dismember and stuff can still get involved. Sure. All right, we are forging. A Dismember would be pretty good here. No Dismember. Oh, this is, this is good. I guess I can make my attack and look at my card with Season Dungeoneer and then decide for sure what I want to do. Uh, will I put Chalice of the Void into my graveyard? Yes. This game is about points of life. Chalice of the Void does not influence points of life. Human. This goes to Trap immediately. Bring my opponent to 9. I made my land drop, so we're good. I probably get to just like Throne of the Dead 3 as well next turn. Agatha's Soul Cauldron. Okay. When a creature card is exiled this way, put a plus one, plus one on counter, counter tree control. Sure. Not quite sure why we're playing that. Do I care about my opponent taking the initiative here? When a creature is exiled this way. I, I guess some weird dismember shenanigans could happen. That could be very uncomfortable for me if I blocked. Sure. Uh, you may have your land. I end up dying because I give this opponent my land. I accept. If they had, like, a combo associated with this that was just going to win the game, though, wouldn't they just, like, not show me that prior to the attack? There's an Emery. Okay, so that can represent a plus one, plus one counter. Right, there's a Plateau. So I am probably going to source the Plowshares Emery this turn, but I don't have to make that decision right now. Just send in, see what happens with these. Uh, let's stack this like this. Uh, I will not put Null Rod into my graveyard. No. I will exile Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Sure. You may attempt to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control. You're going to choose Emery. At this point, I probably just swords to plowshares. And then I just have lethal coming through. Do I still just have lethal coming through, right? This blocks three. I still have lethal coming through. I don't need to move yet then. All right. Yeah, so this is seven plus two, eight, nine. Yep. And we win the match there. I wonder if this was going to do anything super spicy. GG's. All right. Um, I have four mana on turn one, so I'm going to keep my hand. We're playing against a Yorian deck. And we're on the draw, so we'll get a feel for whether this is probably going to be like Death and Taxes or a Fair Blue deck immediately. <sighs> so City of Traders is my turn one land. And I use two pieces of fast mana to accomplish my first creature. Making it a little harder to deploy a secondary threat. If I'm willing to play the game just a touch slower, I could just Fable on turn one which I think I like. Yeah, let's do that. Pitch the spirit guide here. And then I'm less all in. And I probably get to play a four drop on my next turn. Potentially an initiative card, we'll, we'll see. Ooh, definitely an initiative card because that's uncounterable season Dungeoneer. Uh, so yes, I will use this ability. I'm going to get rid of Solitude and probably get rid of Caracas here. All right. Let's crash in. Bring my opponent to 18. Do this. Put this on human. 
lose the cavern. I don't need to show Lotus Petal yet. And we'll do this whole song and dance. This is very good against just about anything except Dress Down. Grab a basic planes. I've made my land drop. So we'll call it good. No, no counter spell from my opponent. No spot removal spell from my opponent. Are they actually a Yorian combo deck? Yorian combo deck would be weird with this as the like a land bug. We've got bug plus red plus white. Just full on every color dot deck. I'm going to forge. I might just forge my Goblin Shaman token so I can continue to attack with it. My mana still definitely, like the mana production definitely still matters for me. And I'm a little confused about what's going on over there. Well, let's attack and see what happens with the Season Dungeoneer trigger. Archon of Ameria. That's a very average draw. I'm going to put that into my graveyard. It's better than a land. It's worse than most of my other spells, other than like Chromox and Lotus Petal. All right, my opponent is at nine. I have Reflection of Kiki-Jiki to copy Season Dungeoneer for next turn. I probably just, like, make an uncounterable Archon and just don't let counter spells be a thing that matters this game. I'm down. It makes casting the Comet in the future ever so more slightly awkward. Also, my opponent might not be base blue. It might be like base Naya, and there's like some tribal flames bullshit going on or something like that. Like, I am very much looking forward to seeing what they discard. Florian revealed. Are we like up, up the beanstalk elementals? Source the plowshares archon. Okay. Now you are attacking. I just hold the initiative. This is a very valuable creature, but like holding the initiative matters a lot. I am going to hold the initiative. Tradesies. Leyline binding. Okay. And they're done with me. They should not have showed me Leyline binding there. I think Leyline binding confirms that my opponent is doing like up the beanstalk plus Yorian plus like. Yorian and the Lorian and Elementals. I, I think that's what's happening. So I'm probably going to get rid of Chalice of the Void. I don't really know what that's countering right now, and I'm going to think about more copies of this as well. What do I cut from here? Or do I just not bring in more copies of Swords to Plowshares? Or do I get rid of some copies of Solitude? Because two for oneing myself isn't the best. This keeps my white count. The same, actually higher, since I boarded out Chalice. Alright. So this could be... Turn 2 Fable. Into turn 3 and turn 4 initiative creatures. That's fine. It doesn't go turbo, but I don't know that it needs to. And, uh, yeah. We're chilling. Can even play a basic on turn 1. Ooh. Alright. Sometimes I play Archon next turn. Basic land. So my opponent is respecting Blood Moon in their five color deck. Finding Trop. Okay. No, up the Beanstalk there. I think Archon is too bad versus Swords to Plowshares or other similar removal for me to want to play that this turn. So I think this is a Fable turn. Um, so let's do this. I will put it on Human. And we'll use the spirit guide here to ramp. And we're in play. That's all we can say for now, but we're in play. All right, there is a fable of my opponent's own. My hand is gas. I probably want to discard at least a card or two. Looking for more land, though. I'll discard the second fable. I, I think this game is about initiative creatures. Discard this as well. Ooh. So swords my opponent's creature. Still have enough mana to produce an initiative creature. Alright, swords that. I don't think my opponent has counter spells anymore. Can't prove it, but that is my impression. They're at 19. I play Lotus Petal. What does this second cavern go on? 
Does it just also go on human? It might also just go on human in case my opponent is also randomly playing Wasteland. Like, I just have three humans here. And I would like the one that scales up. All right. Season Dungeoneer. Minigame starts because of white, white. I take this one. It's turn three, so I've made my land drop. My opponent loots Omnoth. Okay. It's an elemental, right? That's an elemental. Okay, no further action. Sure. I have Solitude to be thinking about here. I think I diversify my damage by putting this here. Ooh, yeah. All right, uh, let's go ahead and attack on in, see what happens. Swords to Plowshares happens. So we'll just create some extra mana. My opponent didn't put Yori into hand, so presumably they have another potential play. Um, let's do this. What would I like to attack with next turn? I would like to attack with this, and I might want to play Caves of Chaos Adventure and then make a copy of it. I, I think even though this represents a little bit less damage, I still want to play this one. It's just better if blockers get involved. I'm a little suspicious about some of the stuff going on there. Like, it's very possible that I have a wrong read on what they are doing. So I will trap my opponent. They are at 10. They are facing down multiple different bodies. I am insulated versus fury. Okay, yep. Sure. I believe that is supposed to clear my graveyard. Um... Although they might not know that if I didn't show Comet yet. Okay. That is the fifth land drop, so we could be looking at something like Hardcast Fury here. Not with that mana. Alright, that is a Solitude. Sure. So my opponent can now attack and take the initiative. I think I let them take the initiative. I think the reflection of Kikijiki is more valuable than one basic land for them. All right. All right. So let's do gross things. So I will play Caves of Chaos Adventurer uncounterably. And I will use that to take the initiative. I will draw a card. That is an Archon. I will tap Reflection of Kikijiki, targeting Caves of Chaos Adventurer to make a copy. So not only will that give me a hasty version of this, it will also give me Throne of the Dead 3, which hit Solitude, which I think I am down for. So I have 9 incoming damage this turn, which is my opponent's life total. Okay, yep, yep. So my opponent is done with me, and we put up a 4-1 finish in this league. Um, so I guess we need to evaluate the dog. The dog had... Relevant text of an appropriate legacy power level. But when it was in hand with other four drops, like Season Dungeoneer and Caves of Chaos Adventurer, it wasn't the thing that I was wanting to play first. And I think that kind of solidifies something that I was saying at the beginning of the video, where like if you play this card, you're probably not supposed to play four copies of it in most cases. Like... It's bad in multiples. It's nice that it imprints under Chrome Mox, but like ultimately, was Comet better than Fourth Air Lingas would be in this slot? Probably not. So I would be perfectly happy, I think, playing this in a control deck where the the the, the like three ability, the negative one, where you return a card with mana value two or less from your graveyard to your hand, would be a little bit stronger. But I don't think I like this card in the Red White Initiative shell, despite the fact that I did just put up a very respectable finish. Um, otherwise, the cards that I were playing, uh, the cards that I were playing felt pretty good today. And like we saw Comet do good stuff, but like it being a threat that gets pithing needled in Urza Saga world lost me a game. And its own variance with the three of the six abilities definitely lost me a game as well. 
But again, I think this is a card for blue decks, like so many other things. Um, folks, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on comment down below. And if you need to pick up some copies for paper, check out Cool Stuff Inc. Use promo code THRAVENU to save 5% on your order. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya.